We're back with the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. It's time for us to talk about sports this morning. And Monday, Thomas joins us uh, on the show. Monday, it's good to have you join us. It's a, it's a fantastic day to talk sports. Mercy, thank you so much for having me. So, um, a, a quick one. In what a lot of people have described as uh, the World Cup miracle, a lot has been happening in the World Cup. I, I know that uh, Germany in 1954 actually uh, was known for the miracle of that uh, game that was played because they earned it. And so that particular title, it was also followed with another win in 1974 and of course 1990 and in 2014. Uh, I'd like to quickly share your thoughts on the fact that, you know, Germany, a very strong team. I remember in 2019, I was, you know, a German fan. I was supporting big, you know, big time. But, of course, they've been knocked out of the game. Your thoughts, really? I mean, just like you hinted, many people are saying that it's, it's a miraculous World Cup and uh, it's a World Cup of uh, offsets. And uh, that's why we love football. That's why we love uh, soccer. I mean, before the World Cup got on the way, People, of course, have termed it as the most controversial World Cup. People also call it the Money World Cup, and some people also said uh, that it was a World Cup that had no respect for human rights. But here we are in Qatar, about 40 games played already, and we've enjoyed all of them. African countries are coming to the party, but specifically this morning, I'd like to talk about the upsets. Yesterday, Costa Rica had a chance against the German side, and for the second consecutive World Cup that we're seeing Germany knocked out in the group stages. They were knocked out in the group stages of the uh, 2018 World Cup. And here we are in 2022. History, it's repeating itself. It's not only Germany that are the casualties. Japan, uh, of course, uh, are the teams uh, who are dishing out this upset once, once again. Uh, they beat Spain yesterday by two goals to one. And they also did beat uh, Germany by two goals to one. So it's a World Cup where you don't have to underrate any team. If you underrate any team, you are going to face the music for sure. Because everyone has a chance. Everyone is here to play. Of course, the 32 nations that qualify to the World Cup showed in their respective qualification series that they deserve to be at the World Cup. So the World Cup is a ground where you do not have to underrate. And I know it's too early. But this is the greatest ever World Cup that I've ever witnessed. Mercy. So, but let, let's, um, uh, you know, talk further. How would you rate the performance of African countries in the World Cup? Yes, it's also a World Cup where Africa came to the party. Imagine on the final day of round three, we are expecting all African countries to make it to the uh, uh, groups of to the knockout stage. I know Tunisia already out yesterday to confirm Morocco or in the round of 16. Senegal were the ones who started the party. Today, we could get to see Ghana and maybe Cameroon because like I said, you don't have to underrate anybody. Brazil taking on Cameroon today. Cameroon need all three points against the Samba boys and it's very possible. We know why? Because Brazil are going to come in with a Team B side. I know the Team B side of Brazil are very deadly, but some of them have not played in the World Cup before. Some of them, this is a, their debut World Cup game. So a lot can happen. So I'm completely impressed. I'm completely excited that Africans, once again, are the World Cup for the first time since uh, 2018 that we are seeing African nations trying to progress out of the uh, group stage. In the 2018 World Cup, it was an absolute shocker. No African side made it to the round of 16. But in this year's World Cup, we are seeing the likes of Morocco making it to the round of 16 for the first time in 36 years. And not just making it to the round of 16. Topping the group that had Belgium and Croatia. It's a remarkable World Cup for Africans, and I'm, I'm buzzing for that. So uh, which African country would you be uh, seeing progressing to the next stage? Uh, do you see Senegal uh, at least beating England? I can remember that same question. Uh, it was you that posed that question to me. That was two days to the World Cup uh, when we were here on a Friday. And uh, we talked about the chances of African side. And I told you Senegal. And when I told you this, Sadio Mane was cleared to play at the World Cup. And some days later, Sadio Mane was said, hey, I can't play this World Cup. And what? Senegal are still putting on the fire. Senegal are still doing greatly, even without their talisman the African best player of the year, the likes of his smiler side, Kalilu Kolibali, he's been supreme at the back for the Senegalese side. So taking on uh, taking on the three Lions of England this weekend, 
it's a, a 50-50 game. It can go either way. A lot of people on the papers are giving it to England. But England are not ready for what is going to hit them. Senegal are going to bring the game to them. And if England are not careful, they're going to be knocked out by the Terengal Lions. I like how positive you stay every other time, especially when it has to do with Africa and Nigeria. And that's very patriotic. No, no, no. I'm never positive. I'm never positive. No, no, I, no but I that's, that's a something. lot of patriotism. I'm, no, no, I'm never positive about the Super Eagles because Super Eagles, in reality, jokers. But okay. what is happening at this World Cup? I'm so excited to see what Africans are doing. And, and okay, so f fingers across, we, we don't want to begin to delve into, you know, the uh, composition of the play, especially for England. You have the likes of Saka. Uh, he's been very great, and we have seen how amazing he's been, you know, with that game. One would think that the game between England and the United States would probably end with England taking the lead, but unfortunately it was a draw. Uh, like I said, we'll, we'll just leave that at that. Let's g get back, you know, home here and talk about the National Sports Festival that's been declared open. How does that make you feel and what are your expectations? I'm expecting a whole lot. And uh, talking about my feeling, I'm over the moon because, you know, in, in Nigeria, we're trying to get things work. We are trying to make sure everything works. And uh, from my point of view, from my feel, I love to see things working uh, when it comes to sports. And uh, in a competition like this, in a tournament or in an event, sporting event like this, where you get to see 28 different sports and over 16,000 athletes from age 18 to 25. So that is getting the youth off the streets, getting these talents to work. Because I tell you, Nigeria is a country that is blessed, not just with uh, resources, not just with mineral resources, but with human resources as well. We've got what it takes to be ruling the world right now. I, I, I'm pretty sure we are still excited about what Toby Musen is doing on the global stage, but this is how it all begins. The National Sport Festival, back to back, we are seeing it in action. This time it goes to Delta, and according to the reports, Delta are, are still running the show. They won it the last time, and uh, this morning they are still doing so. We've got some games and some events coming up. I'm excited that the National Sport Festival, I mean, in a season where we are struggling to see the NPFL in action, but the athletes right there, when we talk of other sports, are still striving. They're still trying to make a name for themselves. And it all begins in a competition like this. And I'm excited about the National Sports Festival. Uh, the president, Mohamed Bori, was represented by the uh, Honorable Minister of Youth and Sports, Sonadari, in the opening day. And we also, saw, we also saw some great and elaborate opening ceremony where Ruga performed. So, I mean, it's not just sports. It's about entertainment as well. And I'm excited. Mercy. So, but which of the spots are you going to be looking out for, really? <laughs> All right, 28 different sports. I'm a basketball fan. I'm a big basketball fan. I actually love really? basketball more than I, I do love football. But, I, yes, I'm also looking forward to basketball. But the funny thing is that we are seeing uh, squash. We are seeing chess. Mercy, we are seeing darts. I mean, these are foreign sports. And that is what we are having at the National Sports Festival. I mean, it's a resurgence, and uh, it's good to see that uh, we are not left out of the other side of the world. We are trying to compete as far as other sports is concerned. It's not a time where we just get to talk basketball and football in Nigeria. It's a time where we get to talk cricket. It's a time where we get to look at the stars we have and uh, harness them for what is to come. And I'm pretty sure the, the, the future holds a lot for us. Okay, um, I, I'd like you to show your last words as we coast the conversation down now. Mercy, a lot, lots of upsets are yet to be unfolded of this year's World Cup. I mean, I'm excited about the Qatar. Before now, the 2002 World Cup... Uh, unfortunately, we have been disconnected, but we have to let this conversation slide at this point. Uh, we still have the likes of Senegal at the World Cup and, of course, Ghana. Let's see what becomes of these African countries, because that's what it is. Africans are rooting for Africa, and uh, we can only hope that, you know, an African country will make us proud, despite the fact that Nigeria did not make it. And also very uh, excited about the National Sports Festival that's been opened and with all of the games, especially games that we're not used to being introduced. It just shows that we're developing. It can only get better. We, that's the size of our conversation this morning on The Breakfast. Of course, we take a, uh, it wouldn't be a break, but it would just be an, an overall this morning would definitely come through on Monday, all things being equal. Thank you so much for uh, being part of the show from seven o'clock up until this moment. Uh, if you missed out on any part of the conversation, we'd like that you join us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
or at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Now you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're also at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa uh, Lifestyle on YouTube channel. My name is Messi Bokbo. Do have yourself a Merry Christmas.